Hey guys, Mr. Bowman here. Today's video, we are looking to figure out or determine the x and y intercepts of parabolas. This is an extension of how to do that with linear equations, but I thought I'll just show us on Desmos um, what exactly the points I'm looking that we're looking to determine, and then we'll get back onto PowerPoint and we'll be able to do some maths to mathematically figure out those points. So we've got our regular parabola, and we can see it goes through the y axis at zero and it goes through the x-axis also at zero but let's say I move that down two so I move that down two now so what we can see the point where it intercepts the y-axis this point here and what we can see is we can see the y-coordinate is negative two but the x-coordinate is zero and that's because at any point along the y-axis the corresponding x value will always be zero because when we follow that line back to the x-axis, that's at point zero. And similarly, let's have a look at the x-intercept. So we can see it's at about negative 1.4 and zero. And same thing, if we follow this line back, the x-axis back, the y value is always going to be equal to zero. So the way I like to think about it, if you're looking for the x-intercept, the opposite y is going to be zero. And if you're looking for the y-intercept, the opposite x is also going to be zero. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video here. I'm going to get back onto PowerPoint with some examples. And we're going to calculate the x and y-intercepts of given parabolas. Okay, guys, and we are back. And our, we're on PowerPoint, and I've got an example on the right-hand side. We're going to do two questions, start to finish, with the x and y-intercepts. And we're going to start off with that red graph, and then we'll move on to a harder version for the blue graph. So for this red graph, um, we can actually see the, the points here. So there are the two x-intercepts, and there's the y-intercepts. And we could probably just look at it and see what the coordinates are. So for that x-intercept, we're probably looking at 1, 0. And over here, also that's negative 1, 0. And over here, we're looking at 2, 0. And down the bottom, we're looking at 0, negative 2. So we can visually see them, but that's not always the case. So let's mathematically figure out or verify each of these points. So our starting point for the first question, we always write down the equation that we are looking at. And what we're going to do is we're going to find out the y-intercept first. So we're going to focus on the y-intercept. And the thing we know about the y-intercept is the x value will be equal to zero. What we're going to then do is we're going to substitute that back into the equation. So y is going to be equal to zero minus two times zero plus one. That comes to negative two times one, which is negative two. And based on that information, we have an x value and we have a y value those two together form the coordinate so our coordinate would be x comma y which would be zero comma negative two and if we have a look we've actually verified that point that we saw okay so let's get rid of that we're now going to have a look at the x intercepts so let's get that down x intercepts and at that point we know one thing the opposite value is equal to y, so y is going to be equal to zero. We're going to plug that y value into our equation, and we're going to try to figure out those values of x. So that's going to be zero is equal to x minus two, x plus one. And before we know it, we've actually just got a regular quadratic equation. And because this is factorized for us, our life is actually a bit easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the first bracket equal to zero, and we're then going to make the second bracket equal to zero. And we're going to solve each equation separately, and we're going to figure out our two answers, or our two x-intercepts as well. So here what we'll do, so x1, well that's going to be equal to positive two, and x2, that's going to be equal to negative one. Like on the first equation, we've got values of x, 
and we've got a value of y, and they together are going to give us the coordinates of that. So for this answer here, the value or the answer would be x comma y. Well, x is going to be 2, and y will be 0. So that's our first intercept. And if we look at our graph, which I've just circled, that was the first or the one on the right that we observed. Let's try to look at the second one. Again, it's x comma y is the coordinate. The x value we figured out there was negative 1. And the y value up the top was 0. And if we draw an arrow, we match that up with our second x intercept. So what we've done, first equation, we've got all three coordinates. We've got our one y intercept and our two x intercepts. So if you need to pause this video to get that working down, please do. Having examples is really important. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video, clear the working, and we're going to get into that harder, nastier looking question as well. Okay, guys, we're back. We're now looking at the harder blue example. And just like what we did for the previous example, we want to just observe the graph just to see if we can figure out what the intercepts are. So we can clearly see the, x, the first x-intercept here. So that would be negative 5, 0. And we can clearly see the second one, negative 1, 0. Um, what's less clear is the y-intercept. So not quite sure what that is. But it, it does look like, or maybe that's... I don't know, negative 2 and 2 thirds looks about 2, word, two thirds of the way through. We're not quite sure, so we'll probably have to verify to be a bit more precise with that. But it does look like it's going to be a fraction answer, which is why we mathematically need to calculate it. A lot harder to do just visually inspecting our graph. So the first step, so we're on question two. First step, just like any equation, let's write down our formula. Okay. Next step, let's focus on the ones that we want to do first. So we let's have a look at the y-intercept, because that's normally easier to do. So at the y-intercept, we know that x is going to be equal to 0. So we're going to substitute 0 into our equation, and then we're going to try to solve for y. So let's do that. So y is going to be equal to negative 1 half times 0 plus 3. So I've added in the zero where the x should have been, that's going to be squared, and then we're going to add two. So zero plus three, that's three, and if we're going to square that, that becomes nine. So that's going to become negative one half times nine plus two. Negative one half times nine, well that's going to be negative four point five. We're going to add the two, and then y is going to be equal to negative. 2.5 and that's our corresponding y value so we've now got a y value and we had an x value at the top that's enough information to find the exact coordinate of that intercept so our intercept is always x comma y which is going to be 0 comma negative 2.5 and if you compare that with our prediction well we knew it was going to be a fraction or a decimal and we were pretty close but we were a little bit off as well and that's an example of why we need to mathematically calculate it, because sometimes you can't accurately figure it out just by looking at the graph. So that's the y-intercept. Let's now flip over to the x-intercept. And at the x-intercept, we know that the y-value is going to be 0. So the opposite values are always equal to 0. Um, let's put that into our equation. So 0 is equal to negative 1 half x plus 3 squared plus 2. So we now need to go through and mathematically solve this equation. So first step, let's move that plus 2 to the other side. So that's going to become minus 2 of negative 1 half of x plus 3 squared. So I am thinking we are going to run out of room, so we're probably going to use the space up top as well. The step after that, we need to get rid of that multiplication up front. So we're going to change that multiplication to division. So we're going to go negative 2 divided by negative 1 half. That's going to be equal to x plus 3 squared. What that do? So negative 2 divided by 1 half, or negative 1 half, the negative signs are going to become positive. So that's left 2 divided by 1 half, which will become 2 times 2, which is 4. So 4 will be equal to x plus 3 
squared. And what we're going to do next is we're now going to change our equation or we'll do a bit of algebraic manipulation so we can factorize it with equal to zero. So this squared actually means it's x plus 3 that are next to each other. So if we expand that, 4 is going to be equal to x squared plus 6x plus 9. And when we move that 4 to the other side, we're going to have 0 is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 5. We then need to factorize. So we need to factorize that last equation to get our double brackets. That's going to become x plus 5, x plus 1. And from there, we're going to move up to the top. We know x1 is going to be equal to negative 5. And we know x2 is going to be equal to negative 1. So we've split that up and we've solved each equation separately. And from that, we've actually got enough information to do our coordinates. So we've got some x values and we have our original y value as well. So let's have a look at the first answer. So the first answer, so the coordinate needs to be x comma y. Our x we figured out was negative 5. And the corresponding y value was 0. And the next one, x comma y. The x value is negative 1 and the y value is 0. And if we reconcile that with our, what we observed, we got the first answer correct. And we've got the second answer correct as well. But we've now mathematically proved or mathematically verified those x-intercepts. So hopefully you found today's video useful on finding the x and y intercepts of parabolas. The key thing I want to emphasize is this up here. When you're looking for the x or the y intercept, the opposite value x will be equal to 0. When you're looking for the x intercept, the opposite value y will be equal to 0. And after that, it's just following through and solving your algebra. And that's going to be really important. Let's, if you haven't, pause the video already. Make sure you get this example down, including the algebra. Now let's get into heaps of questions.